What's up guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. Today, we're not gonna be talking stocks, we're not gonna be doing any portfolio updates because we've actually got a special guest who's gonna be talking a lot about crypto because I know I briefly talk about crypto on this channel, but not loads. And I know a lot of you guys are in the stock market and follow stocks more than crypto. And you might be a bit skeptical about crypto, which is fair enough. And that's why I've got Crypto Archie on the channel. So we've got Crypto Archie on the channel today, and it's gonna be like a bit of a podcast kind of style video, having a chat with Archie to see what's his top picks in crypto, why maybe you guys should maybe open up to putting some money into crypto, and also just finding out some things about Archie in general and how much does he hold in crypto in the sense of does he have any stocks that he holds and if so what companies so they're the type of questions we're going to be talking about so stay tuned and hopefully you do enjoy this time of video if you do give this video a thumbs up and comment below if you've got any questions and yeah let's get into it all right welcome Archie to the video and today guys what I've said in the intro we're going to be talking to Archie about crypto because I know a lot of you guys are very heavy in stocks and aren't really into crypto at the moment and crypto Archie is known for finding them gems he's really good at finding them really low cap coins that become massive in the bull runs he's done really good in the past in previous bull runs and yeah introduce yourself really I kind of gave you a little introduction yeah. yeah man thanks for having me on so I'm looking forward to having a good discussion about stocks crypto just making money and and all of that good stuff um it's great to kind of talk to an audience who aren't necessarily all in crypto or all really aware of crypto i know obviously some of your audience will be um yeah but yeah i mean what a lot of people will think when they kind of listen about crypto or they hear the word crypto they're gonna think scam they're gonna think risky you lose all your money and I actually kind of share the same idea with a lot of these people. Like crypto is, for the large part, quite scammy. A lot of people lose money and more people lose money than, than what make money, right? But at the same time, you can also make a lot of money if you figure out the rules of the game and how to play it. And crypto essentially is just a game, very different to the stock market. So a lot of people come into crypto with the same ideas as stocks and it doesn't always necessarily work, right? It's a very risky field um you know so yeah i'm looking forward to just talking about like how it relates to stocks yeah. and all of these things yeah because this is the reason why i wanted to get you on because a lot of people are still very against crypto like you say because of it is, it is a risky game like it is a risky game but there's so much money to be made if you do it right and you've done it right and you're going to do it right again and you've proven to do it right because if anyone's seen archie's channel He's proven it with sharing some of the gems that he has in his Patreon, which I'm actually in because it's good. And I'm normally very against Patrons because <laughs> I've got friends I've got friends who've bought Patrons in other fields of like building up a online coaching business or whatever. And no offense to the person doing the Patreon or the course, they've never actually made it themselves in coaching, but they're making money off the people and it always goes bad. But you've actually proven to make money and you're showing you can make money in it and that's the value of it really and also the community i actually like listening into some of the calls and things so it's really good but um thank you yeah but um what got you into crypto like what was your like your background before all of crypto like as you said you're living out in dubai at the moment that's a nice little place to live um where were you before like what were you doing like did you have a job before yeah interesting question so I don't like disclose to people my exact age. It's, it kind of is a mystery to many yeah. people, which is really funny on my behalf because I get such wild guesses. People yeah. get 35, 40, 35. 18. Like there's a huge disparity, right? So I've had every single number in the book mentioned and it's just funny for me to look back and, and see it. But what I'll say is I am pretty young. Um, basically, I've had like one proper job and it was basically a minimum wage job at a bakery, um, you know, getting up at 5 a.m., getting up at 4 a.m., going in really early, and then I'd have university the next day. So it was kind of just a typical um, job, working long hours for low pay. And um, yeah, I was at university, and ultimately what I was doing was every single penny I was earning, I was putting into crypto. 
um, because yeah, I had the true. fortune of being able to live with my parents being young. Um, and yeah, like every single penny went into crypto, grinded, you know, my knowledge in crypto and uh, skipped lectures sometimes and stuff like that and didn't do tests when I was supposed to. And um, paid off. <laughs> yeah, eventually I, I dropped out after a few months um, because of the, the success in crypto. But I would make it clear, like I don't, you know, always recommend dropping out of university. Like it can be good for some people depending on the career path they want to take. But I also do believe in taking risks. Like if you're in a position where you're making more than the lecturers or you're doing something that's really good and you're making money, you're, you're, you're only young once and you'll only have that kind of drive and ambition once. Or it you will have it, but it will definitely diminish as you get older. So the time to take risks is when you're young. Start the business when you're young. Take the risks when you're young. Invest when you're young. Because you can afford to lose it a lot more than when you've got a few kids, grandkids, and loads of people who depend on you. So I absolutely believe in taking risks when you're young. And Chris, crypto is one of the riskiest things you can do. Um, but it played off, like you said. And I don't believe in luck. Like some people say you get you got lucky or stuff like that. I don't necessarily agree because you create your own luck through the path that you take. Um, you know, and I remember like during uh, lockdown, everyone was playing video games and stuff like that. I locked myself in my room and just read books on money and did crypto and things like that. Right. So it mm. all comes from discipline and, and educating yourself. Everything I learned was all from myself, online, YouTube, um, reading, stuff like that. Everything I've learned pretty much when it comes to making money, right? No one in my family that knows anything about crypto. And I wasn't taught at school anything about crypto. So I think at the end of the day, it's quite a, it's quite a motivating thing to know that anyone can do it. You just got to put in the work. And that's the beauty with the modern age where any young person can make money online. You just have to put in the mm. work and have some degree of basic intelligence. Yeah. So then going on to that with the whole, you're putting everything into crypto. Um, I'm guessing those stocks, you just, pre was it just purely crypto just to get that like net worth almost up? Like just get the capital up. Yeah, I did have stocks. Like I started off with stocks um, when I was like 15 or 14 maybe, but Oh, wow. um, I was doing it under my dad's account, so he didn't he didn't ever have any stocks. But I asked him to make <laughs> an account um, and manage it. Trading like, two I, I would manage it. Yeah, trading two one two, um, eToro. Those those accounts we had them. Um, only had a very small amount of money in it, but that was a huge lesson for me because I kind of learned how to manage money at, at such a young age, um, how to manage like risk you know, how to manage emotions if something goes up and something goes down. So yeah, I had a very small amount, like a couple hundred quid in, in stocks. And then eventually crypto was kind of caught my eye. I started putting money into that. I did have like some money in a S and P 500, but I just sold it all and put it into crypto. But recently yeah. I have actually been buying stocks like the last year to two years, I have been buying stocks. Um, and particularly in the last like six months to eight months, you especially been... want to with you though, like with, as you get more yeah. money, to be honest with you, you want to be more careful of it. You don't want to keep chucking it in the casino. Like we say in crypto, <laughs> because exactly what happens if it does go to crap, like you're, you're, it's bad. But this is the other thing though, is like, cause you went and decided you wanted to build up that capital, didn't you quicker with crypto. So this is the other thing I was going to ask, and a lot of people do talk about this quite a lot, and some don't, is as a beginner or someone who's got a smaller pot of money, would you say, or would you go with just picking, let's say, five coins and putting them five coins instead of getting 30 coins? Because I know someone, we've got a little Telegram group in um, crypto, and it's funny because the guy that um, is in crypto, he literally has like 40 different picks maybe even 50 and all having like little bits in it and it's like it it doesn't make sense like you might as well go with a coin that's you really do believe in as your safety net which mine is casper which i got through with you actually um and if you actually look into casper it's a very solid coin to be fair 
Um, so yeah, what would you say? What's, what would you do if you were back at your beginning stage? It's super interesting because you can make money either way you do it. So last bull run, I had a lot of coins at some points and I had very little coins at some points. Um, ultimately, you just have to get the core solid ones right. So yeah. I would say you can have maybe 90 to 95% of your portfolio in some solid picks, like five or six or seven picks. And then if you want to gamble with 5% and just leave it for meme mm. coins or really dodgy kind of risky coins, you can do that. But as long as you've got the core backbone to the portfolio, right, that's what matters. So I would probably stick to like five to seven coins as your main ones. That should make up maybe 95% of the portfolio. 5% you can gamble on maybe midterm plays, short-term plays, high-risk plays. But you mentioned Casper, and I think it's very important to have a safety net in crypto, particularly if it's all your investments. Like some people, they come to me, they have no stocks, no property, nothing, yeah, exactly. just crypto. And I tell them, you have to have Bitcoin or ETH. Like you, you have to in that situation. If you've got no stocks, no real estate, nothing like that. And obviously I can't give advice, but... I'm doing this to protect people because I think oh, yeah. you can't go and put all your money into low caps. Like you need a you need Bitcoin, you need ETH. And if you have got stocks or you have got things on the side, then maybe yeah, Casper, Solana, you know, high high caps mm. um with fairly reputable teams and stuff like that, you can hold them as your safety nets. But to for be most fair, people, that's yeah. Oh, sorry, I was just gonna say though, you, when you were mentioning about the Bitcoin thing, because I know you talk about obviously having Bitcoin as your safety net because we all know over history it's the best performing asset in the last 10 years or 15 years however long it's been and the reason why i'm not in bitcoin i've got like the tiniest bit is because i've got my stocks as my safety net you could say um and i just feel like my crypto is more my try and build up my capital and hopefully at the end of the bull run chuck it into stocks property and yeah, that's it really. But what is your most bullish pick in crypto at the moment? So like what's your yeah, favorite coin at the moment? I'm guessing Casper as we've been chatting or I would say Casper's probably the most solid and most bullish pick for me right now. I have some kind of higher risk gaming coins that I'm looking at, but for someone maybe getting started in crypto, I would definitely recommend researching Casper, going and checking it out, you know, because Crypto, the, the main thing that crypto was founded upon was decentralized money. That's what it was founded upon. People knew that the dollar has intrinsic uh, flaws, the pound has intrinsic flaws, and every single fiat currency does. So the main thing that started crypto was Satoshi Nakamoto's vision of a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer form of payment. And now everyone calls Bitcoin gold now, a form of digital gold. So it hasn't lived up to the initial expectation. And that's not to say Bitcoin's bad. I have a huge bag of it. I'm really bullish on it. I have no issue with Bitcoin. But what it is to say is there's still a gap in the market when it comes to a decentralized form of payment. And a lot of cryptos, they've skipped the kind of decentralized payment and they've gone to Web3. They've gone to this utopia of, you know, glory land and everything's, you know, futuristic. And they've skipped the core fundamental reason why crypto was created in the first place which was to be a decentralized form of payment so mm. that's what casper's doing they're trying to be a scalable form of bitcoin essentially right bitcoin we know is really decentralized we know it's really really secure it can't get hacked but we know it isn't scalable it can't scale to thousands of transactions every second and um you know, if you go if you go to a supermarket and try and pay for something in Bitcoin, it's going to take a long time for it to actually confirm on their end. And that isn't a good modern currency. It's just not. It's more of a store mm -hmm. of value. So the purpose of Bitcoin has kind of shifted from a form of payment to a form of uh, value, you know, a store of value. So there's still a gap in the market. And whether Casper is going to be the one to rise up and be that decentralized currency, I don't know. But what I do know is crypto is trend based and it's sentiment based. And right now there's a huge sentiment around a peer to peer form of currency. And therefore, in the next one to two years, I see Casper doing really well based off that sentiment. Who knows in five years, there could be another one that comes along. Oh, yeah. faster, better, better team. Who knows? But right now, 
Casper's the best, in my opinion. Yeah, it literally covers it all. Like, if it could just, I think I was looking into it. Like, Visa cards can hold, can do sixty thousand transactions a second, and Casper is just, it's in the test now at the moment, and it's able to do, um, I think it's three thousand transactions a second, and then once that happens, they want to go on to. I can't remember off the top of my head. It's either a hundred or a thousand blocks a second in the time. So then, obviously, ten times that that will get onto thirty thousand transactions a second. So, but then the most important thing is, like you say, is it's um, decentralized, which is huge. To be able to do it that fast and be decentralized is massive. And then on top of it, they want to do smart contracts in the future, which is just another thing that's just unbelievable. It's it's just a good coin but definitely recommend researching it to anyone looking into crypto what is your like top narratives alongside i know gaming is one of them um and also layer ones what what are your biggest narratives are they the ones i just pretty much said um yeah is there any others yeah I, w- I would definitely say gaming and layer ones are the two biggest um there's some other ones which could do well um but they're very risky like meme coins i think will do well but it's really really risky and it's a skill to actually master to know which meme coins will rally and which ones won't brc20 is also interesting like building on bitcoin but again it's quite risky it's new so without a doubt the two best for me are layer ones which basically just means blockchains um base layer blockchains like casper like cardano solana those types of things um ethereum killers so projects that are trying to be really scalable and do what ethereum does such as solana which i think is going to do really well again this bull run casper as well um so anything that's trying to do what ethereum does with smart contracts but way more scalable and cheaper i think they could still do well this cycle because we had that narrative last bull run of who's going to kill ethereum is it going to be bnb is it going to be cardano and none of them really succeeded, but we are starting to see Solana grow in size. Um, maybe Solana's the one this cycle, and then next cycle it's Casper when they roll out the smart contracts. But um, yeah, I'm definitely looking at Ethereum killers, and the gaming sector is something which may sound crazy to people when they're thinking about crypto, but it's really simple to understand. Basically, just think of a game with a token that is tradable, and you can convert it into fiat. So. The most common games, Fortnite, for example, has a currency. Instead of buying um, V-Bucks, you buy like an actual Fortnite token. It could be called V-Bucks, but you can convert it into dollars. And you can buy NFTs with it and things like that. 8-Ball Pool is another one. Instead of playing these games for this pointless, worthless currency, why not play them for a real currency which you can transact in to dollars? Um, So that is almost... the 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 main thing behind crypto gaming it's play to earn you can earn real money you've got things like nfts which can be on the blockchain and i want to make it clear i'm not believing right now that this is in real world fruition and everyone's playing these games i'm not deluded like no one's really playing these games right but that's not the point the point is people are hyped up about the games and if there's hype there's money and i'm going to capitalize off that so Maybe in five years, people play the games to a large extent. Maybe in three years, they do. But right now, no one really is playing the games to a large degree. But they don't have to be because people are buying the tokens. And that's the main thing that moves the price. So ultimately, I'm looking to make money, right? I'm not looking to play the games. I'm not looking to um, do any of that. I'm not looking to use the tokens. I'm just looking to buy them and, uh, you know, flip them and make some money. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like you say, you... To be honest with you, crypto is again, you're against everyone, really. Um, you're against other people in the real world of selling before them without being brutal. Like, that is the world of crypto, um, especially in these type of coins. And, um, yeah, I think gaming's an interesting one because I, I have been in um, the previous bull run and sadly I did get wrecked. Um <laughs> Because, because like, it didn't help. Like the people who I was around, it's you. It, you get euphoria. Everyone goes, "No, it's going high," and all that. Like it's, yeah, it's not good. I've learned my lesson, and they always say you, you should really have experienced one bull run because 
you understand what happens like your emotions do take over um and i need to control it this time yeah. um but yeah it's yeah i think gaming's a really good one it's from previous ball cycles they did go crazy and the other thing is i wanted to say is where do you think bitcoin will top out because we like because obviously the etfs have come in which is really good news for long term for crypto and I think the previous market cap went to three trillion off the top of my head for all of crypto, roughly around there. Um, so, do you think the market size of crypto will get to six trillion or eight or ten? Um, and then also Bitcoin, where do you think that's going to top out? Or well, yeah, it, it's a great question. I think the market is going to roughly double in size. That's my opinion. I think Bitcoin yeah, will roughly think. double, so it goes from seventy k to around one hundred and forty. That seems reasonable to me. I think Ethereum will probably double. And then all the alts, most of them aren't going back to their all-time highs. But there'll be new ones, which obviously come around like Casper, which go to really high market caps. Um, mm -hmm. And then there'll be projects like Solana, which could do maybe three or four times what it did last cycle. So I think we're probably going to see maybe a $6 trillion total market cap. We don't know to be exact. But the law of diminishing returns is a thing and it's not going to go to like 50 trillion, which some people nice. will say and stuff like that. You know, we've got to be reasonable. So I think maybe double the money that we saw last time will come in this time. I think it's conservative, mm. but it's probably the most uh, likely outcome. It could be triple. It could be just less than double. It's but nice. I would assume that double the uh, the value will come in. Well, that yeah, because I'm, I'm definitely being going on the conservative side and i think going with the six trillion market cap of whole whole of crypto i think is a conservative realistic way of kind of getting a gauge of maybe it's time to sell out of your cryptos or before um so that's what i'm definitely going to be doing and it's interesting as well like when you do take a step back out of the ho even just regardless of this short term of obviously the bull run because i am going to be selling out while it's obviously topping out and everything but it's interesting how early if crypto is here to stay it's very very interesting how early we are to crypto even now because if you look at apple and microsoft they're both nearly three trillion market caps just two companies and i know they're the biggest companies in the world mm -hmm. um but it just shows how massive the stock market is in general and how small crypto is if you look at it now it's like, like a trillion i think if not less um for the whole of crypto so it's quite interesting like how if when we look back in like like say like in 30 years time we're going to look back at this and be like whoa like how mad is it and that's why i've done this youtube channel to document it because it will just be i think it'll be hilarious when i'm older and be like look at all the things i've done wrong and also the things i've yeah. hopefully done right but yeah, that's interesting then. Yeah, so six sure. trillion. What's also interesting is like if you look at how much dollars there are circulating, like in, in oh, value. Mental. So there's trillions, there's right? Trillions. So trillions. Or, I don't know the exact amount, but it's ridiculous. Yeah. So even if Bitcoin makes up like ten percent of the value of dollars, it's like a huge, huge value. Um and then you look at the size of gold and things like that. And gold, you know, is is huge in value. So, yeah, I think the best comparison with Bitcoin is probably gold in value. Um, yeah, and it will take time for Bitcoin to get to that level, but I think it will at some point in its yeah uh, I do. trajectory. Yeah, everyone's going to just start, like we we're saying earlier about the ETFs. People's pension funds will be going into crypto, and it is it's just going to slowly just get huge. It's just going to be crazy in years to come but um that's why i'm literally trying to take advantage of this bull cycle and walk away with hopefully some decent gains and then be more smart with next bull runs buy a lot more bitcoin um a lot more safer plays but at the moment i would say my portfolio i haven't actually shared it with people in months it's grown a lot thanks to some of your picks um, <laughs> and also I've been really just putting money in crypto um, and yeah that, uh, hopefully I can walk away with a decent amount going on to stocks so that you you said you hold some stocks 
what are the stocks that you hold if you want to say yeah man so <laughs> i hold maybe five percent of my wealth i would say in stocks um i hate to say it but i have about maybe 80 to 85 percent in crypto right now so it's a yeah. it's a very high percentage but next bull run it will definitely be lower maybe it's only 10 percent in crypto next bull run but i like to operate in a realm where my knowledge is favorable and i know crypto inside and out so although we know stocks is less risky than crypto for me actually crypto is more safe than stocks if that makes sense because you know, I know it so well right and i'm sure a wall street stock investor um stocks will be a hundred times safer for them than what crypto is because wherever your knowledge is the safety is that's how i see it so i know crypto really well if something did happen i would probably pull out before it happened um whereas yeah. stocks my knowledge isn't necessarily knowledge. fully in that field i know a few things Thanks. but um it's not the thing that i'm kind of um putting all my efforts into right so in terms of the stocks i hold i hold a huge amount of tesla that's the main one that i hold um i actually bought some today um yeah, as of the nice. time we're recording this like, as well yeah it's dipping yeah. so i'm buying in the dips you know i don't really look at ta that much but with stocks it seems to be kind of easier right you can kind of just see the dips and when they're good buys. So yeah. Tesla probably makes up like 60% of my stock portfolio, which isn't great, but <laughs> it's a really high percentage. Uh, and I, I'm doing that because I believe in Elon Musk. Whether you like him or not, he knows how to build a business. He's a workaholic. He's got literally the internet with Starlink. He's got space with SpaceX. He's got the realm of information with X and he's got the cars with Tesla. Now, obviously, the company we're investing in is Tesla, right? We're not investing in SpaceX or X or any of those. Yeah. But it all kind of links in to him and what he can do. And I see Tesla as far beyond just a car company. They're a tech oh, yeah. company. They're an AI company. They're all of that. So who knows what they're going to do in the future? They could release a phone. They could release a, a rocket. Like they could do anything, right? So, um, yeah. Tesla for me is like a, a company which I just think is going to grow in the future. Um, and then I hold a few other companies like just kind of like blue chips, to be honest, nothing special. I hold small amounts of those. And then I have um, just some of the NASDAQ and some of the S&P 500. And I just kind of yeah, DCA nice. into those. But yeah, Tesla is like the main one for me. I think maybe I hold yeah, like Tesla's a little bit fun. of Rolls Royce. And some other companies. Oh yeah, that's done really, really well. Small amounts. Rolls Royce has done really well as well. But um, yeah, no, I'm in Tesla. Tesla's one of my bigger holdings because, like, if you research Tesla as well, like, it's just insane what they're doing. Like, they're building beyond let you like you say cars because they're gathering one million miles a day a day in data of driving compared, and it's just smashing everyone out, everyone else out of the park with um, their cars. And then obviously with that data, they're going to use for autonomous driving. And then they want to then go into taxis. So then when you get your Uber or a Tesla, because they'll be the next Uber and you won't have an actual physical driver, it'll be Tesla. And then their margins and everything can be really high and literally dominate that market. That market's huge um, from what people are predicting. And um with the robot they're building, it's so clever. It's it's so, so clever. And that's another thing that they're going down. So they've got loads of different avenues. You could literally go on for ages with Tesla, but that's interesting to know, to be fair, because that was the one thing I was thinking is like, and it's interesting to know what all these other crypto YouTubers, are they 100% in crypto? Do they have some stocks or property or anything, or are they all in? And um, yeah, and, and sometimes I know... It's probably, I'm not going to mention it too much, but you do see quite a lot of crypto YouTubers claiming like they've made it and they haven't. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you can see through it. Um, and yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I yeah. know, man. It's it's like, there's, there's a lot of fake it till you make it. There's a lot of people who kind of say they've done it, but they haven't. There's no track record of their calls or what they bought. Um 
you know, like they have a job and stuff like that. And I'm not saying I'm not saying for one second you you shouldn't make a YouTube channel if you're not financially free, right? Because you could still have alpha, you could still have knowledge, yeah, 100%. and uh, you could still help tons of people. Like I know YouTubers in crypto who they're not financially free, you know, they're not necessarily retired or whatever that means, but they have knowledge, right? And that they're close to making it. They're on the journey. So but I, I think it's just important that there's transparency. I think it's important that people, you know, make mm. it clear. I haven't made it yet, but I probably will. And um, yeah, I, I encourage anyone, like if they want to document their journey, if they want to um, share any knowledge they have in they anything have kind of investing related, they're more than welcome to. Like I, I mm. applaud people doing that. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. It's it's the it's you just get some that obviously claim like they've done it before and you just know they haven't but the ones that are open and another one i i really like is crypto john because he's he's very honest that he works like he works he puts a lot of his money in crypto and he's just very transparent and that's the main thing for me like just transparency is the, the biggest thing um and and it's just good to like i think it's cool to share your journey and just look back in time and also for people that are in the same point of view as you like i think that's why like i say i started is to like for me to look back at my portfolios and also for people to follow my journey and kind of be in the same shoes as like me where we're i'm still learning i'm always trying to find what the best ways are to build up that capital and people can follow me on my journey with that um if they want and yeah it's just cool and it's interesting that i came across your page um because I came across your page through you doing an interview with Paul Caslin. And if you don't know who that is, he's the founder of Hello. And how I found out through Hello was um, previous ball cycle, which was Doge Dash. And I got in literally the first week and I was up a lot with um, that because it turned into obviously Hello and we know the gains of Hello. And sadly, I didn't buy a tangent. And I got, um, yeah, I got scammed. So I lost it all, which is just annoying. But well, you yeah, learn. I've, learned, I've done. I've done, I've done so learned. many mistakes. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. you learn from them, Did right? Because mistake. I've made mistakes in crypto. Um, luckily, I've never been hacked or scammed or anything like that. But I bought bad cryptos and lost money. And you learn from it. And I, what one thing I have done as well, I sent loads of money uh, in Quant one night few years ago it would be worth a lot now i sent it to the wrong address i think i put like oh wow i don't know i put the wrong network or something stupid like that <laughs> yeah and um yeah like the reason i did it was because it was super late i think i had an exam on the day and i had, it, I had an exam the next day so i was doing like my a levels and i was just like you know really busy like working all the time it was like 2 a.m and yeah. I, I just i messed up you know i i kind of lapsed concentration and that's what happens so i always say to people now don't send crypto to an address at late at night don't do yeah. it if you're stressed don't do it if you're on the go sit in a room focus on it and take it seriously because you could lose a lot of money if you put the wrong thing in right unlike mm -hmm. a bank if you send it to the wrong address it's the blockchain there's no intermediaries there's no middlemen you're not getting it back it's gone forever yeah so that's yeah. the number one tip if you're coming to crypto and you're new I literally did the opposite. I was I woke up really early. I had like a um a video shoot I had to do like I think it was stupid, like five in the morning or something, and I was scrolling Twitter and um I saw um one of the cryptos that I follow. It wasn't actually hello, it was um Trius. Um and they they had like in the you know the threads that you have on Twitter, um on X now it's called um they had like a thread well it looked like a thread it and um it wasn't clicked on the page it they bought followers to make sure they had a hundred and something thousand followers they made sure they had the blue tick and i completely forgot at the time that um you can pay for the blue tick now yeah. and and everything looked so similar and because i was so uh, i just literally woke up um i clicked the link and yeah it went so Rest in peace, man. <laughs> yeah. At least I did it now. I know it sounds yeah. mental, but at least I did it months and months ago and it's done now and I've 
got my cold storage um and yeah but it could be a lot more in the bull run right so you just got to learn from these things like a lot of people do them there's a lot of scammers in crypto and you've just got to like i never do airdrops i never do staking really i don't click links like i just buy a crypto get it in my tangent that's it i don't do anything else so that's that's where the scams come in a lot of the time is with these like additional bonus ways of making money oh and yeah for the most part they're just it, they're just best off avoid avoiding like i know cryptos that have had staking pools and then they just close the website and you can't access the crypto anymore um so yeah. it was the most dumbest thing i've ever done in my life like i it was one of those where i i did it and i was just like in my head i was like what what have i just done like i i and the worst part is i I've been very against and I know about the airdrops and I don't do airdrops, but because it looks, I don't know, I'm, I, let's, that's the thing. You can also see how much you actually lost and they, and how much you would have now. It, it's horrible. It literally makes your stomach turn, but that's it. it you hopefully will make it all back and more. In the yeah, ball you run, don't dwell on the losses, man. You don't dwell on them. No, you just got to move forward. And, and that's the game of crypto. Like That's why you should seriously, before getting into crypto, if you're watching this video now, do your research into crypto, the basics of sending from addresses to another address um, and just getting that down to a T because you'll just lose probably more money just being in like the crypto space because you don't even know how to send things and it will just be a nightmare. So definitely research that and then get into some of these coins because I know the coins that some of these um, coins that you get into, you get into them early before they get onto the big exchanges and that also increases pumps and obviously people call them normies the people that are in coinbase <laughs> and stuff because they don't want to go beyond coinbase and, and yeah. things but that's where the gains are getting before coinbase and i've got friends i've told them get into um using all these other exchanges and using the tangents and all these type of cryptos but they don't want to so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it i mean i recommend people at least dig into getting out of just the coinbase loop because once a coin's on coinbase you can't make that much money a lot of the time it's usually too late i'm not saying go all dgen and just get into pancake swap and uniswap but just do look at venturing out i'm not saying do it i'm yeah. saying look into it because that's where the real money is um and that's what i do essentially is try and find the coins before they go onto coinbase before they go onto binance that's where yeah. I'm putting my focus. Thanks for coming onto the channel. I do really appreciate it. And hopefully people that have watched this has learned something. And if you haven't actually come across Archie, then his channel's Crypto Archie. I'll put a thing on the screen and link in the description. Um, and yeah, check out a um, few, few of um, Archie's picks. And yeah, that's it really. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on, man. It's been a it's been a great conversation, and um, yeah, I recommend everyone likes the video and try and push it up the YouTube algorithm. That'd be great.